Grab a cup of tea or listen as you go, ladies. This is your hour with Dr. Zoe, your life and relationship coach, with encouragement, on point insight, inspiring guests, health tips, and advice. Dr. Zoe helps busy women keep their mind in the game by redefining your superwoman. You're listening to The Dr. Zoe Show. Thank you for tuning in. You are listening to The Dr. Zoe Show. You are a woman who is strong and capable and sometimes tired, and that's okay. It's fine to be tired sometimes. It reminds me of a saying that I have in my wall at home. Don't grow weary and well-doing. And this means a lot to me, and I think it should mean a lot to a lot of busy women because we're doing a lot sometimes and we get tired. We're taking care of ourselves, our families, our spouses, our work, and it's easy to get tired. But just a little reminder, don't grow weary in it because when you're doing good things, good's going to come back to you. So if you're tuning in for the first time, welcome. Welcome to my show. This show is not for super women who have it all together. This is for women who are sometimes struggling. We all struggle sometimes, and this show is for you. And we're going to talk about, well, we always talk about things that matter to busy women all over the world. So every woman has a superpower. And my goal as your life coach is to help you find it embrace it and share it with the world and I encourage you in your your struggles and I love to share some of my own and I give tips and advice to make your life a little easier here we are redefining your superwoman so you can listen here on laradionow.com every Tuesday from 12 to 1 for those who can't always listen live you can subscribe to my podcast on iTunes Libsyn Stitcher and Google just search for the Dr. Zoe show redefining your superwoman you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel Dr. Zoe talks and listen to episodes there the easiest method to connect with me is to simply text the word join to 38470 which will add you to my free monthly newsletter you'll get freebies and monthly tips encouragement and insight right into your inbox and I promise I don't sell your stuff it's all good stuff so we have another great show today we have a little testosterone here the first man ever on our show Uh, when I told him that he was gonna be the first man he asked me if I was biased against men of course not we love we love men (laughs) I just said we love women Um, (laughs) (laughs) Of course, of course. We love women too, but we love men. We need them in our lives. So uh, for our health tip section today, we're going to be talking about Kegels, ladies. I hope you all know what they are, and I bet most of you aren't doing them. They're not just about better sex. Of course, they're about overall vaginal health, overall health, and surprise, your husband should be doing them too. So stay tuned. And our main segment today, we're going to be talking to Greg Dudzinski. Am I saying your last name right? Yes, you are. Yeah. Pretty close. Good enough. <laughs> you say it. You say it. Dzinski. Dzinski, okay, about how to ignite love and intimacy in our marriage. We're also going to talk about the biggest roadblocks to intimacy and why your husband sometimes lies to you. Hmm. This is going to be interesting. And we're going to follow up. Don't be biased. Okay, okay. (laughs) And we're going to follow up with some real talk about making tough decisions. So next up, health tips. Remember, your body and mind are intimately connected. You cannot have health in one without health in the other, and that's why I have a health tip segment. Healthy looks different on everybody, so no comparisons, ladies. So my guest, his name again, like I said, is Greg Dzinski of theartofrelationships.org. He is Detroit's love guru, and I love your personality, Greg. He's a little outspoken, so we're going to have fun today. <laughs> oh. He's... <laughs> He's a licensed psychotherapist and relationship specialist. He has a book called The Relationship Guide Tools to Ignite Love and Intimacy, and that's what we're going to talk about today. He also has a radio show called The Art of Relationships, and you can check him out on iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and Facebook. Is that correct, Greg? Yeah, oh, Facebook, SoundCloud, and TuneIn as well. Awesome. Awesome. So welcome, Greg. Thanks for being a part of our show today. Thank you so much. And our very first guy. (laughs) <laughs> oh my god i hope i don't get overly excited that's not a good thing is it <laughs> i think you'll be just fine <laughs> you'll be fine so how's the weather there in detroit actually it's beautiful it's been uh, actually awesome oh great no rain sunny warm it's been 
perfect. Nice. I'm kind of sad because our summer is coming to a close. If you're listening to this real time, it's uh, August 1st, I think. It's the beginning of August. So Absolutely. Yeah. I thought out in Cali, though, it was summer all the time out there for you. Yeah, it is, kind of. <laughs> but, when, but remember... I'm a mom, and so the end of summertime means school starts. All of our summer relaxation is done. So it's not quite done, but it's getting there. So anyway, I decided to talk about Kegels after a conversation I had with the client, and I started thinking, in our everyday busy lives, this might not be on everyone's radar, but it is super easy to incorporate in your life, and the benefits are tremendous. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this, ladies, and then we're going to invite uh, Greg to give us some information, too. So what are Kegels? They were discovered by Arnold Kegel, that's the name. What do they do, and why in the world am I putting this in my health tip segment? First, well, actually, a little disclaimer, we're obviously women going to be talking about sexual health, and if you have some kiddos you're listening to with, and you might not want them to, to hear about this, you might want to step into another room. My boys sometimes listen to the show. Guys, if you don't want to hear it, you can step out too, but my kids are teenagers, and it's all good education. So first, you need to understand that you have a pelvic floor. Your pelvic floor muscles, actually called the pubo pubococcygeus muscles, yeah, I had to say that twice, pubococcygeus muscles are like a hammock that spans from your pubic bone to the base of your spine, and it keeps your uterus, vagina, bladder, and your bowel in place. So I want you to get that visual. All those organs I just talked about, without a strong muscle set there, they could literally fall out of your body, ladies. This is called prolapse, and that visual helps you understand the importance of a Kegel. So a Kegel exercise is literally just tightening and toning that region of your body, those groups of muscles. So who needs to do it? Almost all women. So basically any woman who becomes pregnant, is postpartum, is probably over about 30 because as we age, those muscles, all of our muscles tend to, to um, decline, um, needs to be doing Kegels. It's important to do it regularly, especially when you're pregnant, to help avoid the unnecessary damage to that muscle because during the second uh, phase of your labor, that's where the baby passes through. If your muscles aren't strong in that area, number one, they're gonna, the baby's gonna tend to stay there longer, causing more damage to, to those muscles. And then um, if your muscles aren't strong, number one, it's gonna increase injury during the the labor and it's gonna increase issues afterwards. So I always wonder, why don't we teach this to our daughters? Mom, if you're listening, why didn't you teach me about what happens to your vagina after you have a baby? <laughs> Obviously we can kind of have an idea about it, but the reality is after you have a baby and also as you age, um, sometimes you can have you know leaking of your urine if you're jumping, running, sneezing, things like that. And so for sure you need to be doing a Kegel. So who needs to do it? pretty much everyone over 30. You need to be doing Kegels. It is possible to over tighten that muscle um, and you could develop issues with that. But like I said, if you're over 30, you've had a baby, don't worry about that. That's not gonna be the problem. So uh, let's see, how do you do a Kegel? Most women do it incorrectly, and really it's because it's difficult sometimes to find that muscle if you're not used to it or you haven't practiced. So the best way to identify that muscle is to stop your stream of urine. So when you go to the bathroom and you try to stop that stream of urine, that is the muscle group that you're using to, to stop it. And so those are the muscles you need to try to focus on. And so you do that by urinating, stopping it, starting it. It's not something you should do all the time to practice your Kegels necessarily unless you make sure you do void because stopping your urine makes the urine go back up into the bladder and that's dangerous for you. If it stays there, as long as you make sure you fully void, then it's okay to do that um, when you're urinating. So you need to do eight to 12, holding each for eight to 10 seconds, three times per day. And it could take up to 15 weeks to really see a big difference. So consistency is very important. Now here's a little tip. You don't really need weights or contraptions, although those are out there. If you're interested, you could certainly Google them. But really, just like any time you're starting a weight uh, exercise um, regime, your body weight is enough. So you use your own body weight, you do your Kegels, and you can work up from there. 
So what are the benefits? Reducing the risk of prolapse, the, those organs sinking into your, your body, or I'm sorry, sinking into your vagina. No more leakage when sneezing, jumping, or running. Better sexual stimulation, and of course, also uh, increased and stronger, more powerful orgasms. So there are also some benefits for men. Well, first, let me just check a look. Well, actually, yeah. Je uh, Greg, can you tell us about the benefits for men with Kegels? Absolutely. Great advice you're giving. Thank big you. Time too. And got to remember, there are two main, well, let's say three muscles with mm -hmm. the pubic floor region and all this right. stuff. But you have to remember, even with men, the benefits are delayed gratification, mm -hmm. right? Which means it's not the oops, I'm sorry disorder or, or men are coming too quick. Right. And also they can maintain... Uh, an erection longer so they strengthen erections and they also help men sort of uh, have more control if you will as well great so okay those are big benefits and let's face it the men benefit but who actually benefits in the long run is it the woman absolutely right? and uh, without a doubt without a doubt and also I'm all, I'm all about women being pleased so men listen up listen up men listen up and so also it's good for prostate health so absolutely that's Thank a great you. yes yeah. Absolutely. yeah and so i need yeah. to check and make sure my husband is doing these kegels and it's funny because you actually greg alerted me to the fact that men ought to be doing kegels as well it's not even something that i it was really on my radar oh absolutely yeah when we spoke on friday yeah i mentioned that and you were a little bit surprised and i yeah i promote that you know with men matter of fact i need to start promoting that more once in a while i do but again you know it's one thing that gets missed a lot too mm -hmm. and men can do it same format as you described to women and it's same thing that you you know you stop your urine that type the muscle but you also if you want to call it the sphincter muscle right right uh, where you know you go to defecate whatever uh -huh. that you try to hold that that's going to help strengthen the upper and the lower pelvic floor regions uh big time too so that's going to be a huge tip for both men and women to right. be able to strengthen the whole pelvic floor region upper and lower in the sides as well so that's very important useful. thank you so much very important so when can you do this women you can do it when you're stopped at a red light you can do it when there's a commercial break sometimes just reminding yourself okay every time i'm watching tv and there's a commercial break i'm going to do my kegels or every time there's a stoplight i'm going to do my kegels first recognize where the muscle is and then perform the kegels super easy you can just incorporate it into your life so how do you know if you're doing it right so you can hold a mirror between your legs and look at the area that Greg just talked about between the rectum and the vagina called the perineum and it should lift when you're doing a Kegel. You can also place your finger just inside the vagina, try a Kegel and you could feel a squeeze, a lift and an inward pull on the finger. And of course, like I told you before about stopping the flow. And men, I think you can probably do something similar. You can also, can't. Well, you can also um, attempt to do it uh, when you are having sex and your uh, partner can tell you if he's feeling the squeeze. So if Absolutely. You, Great advice. Thank you. So if you really need some help, there's some pelvic floor therapist as well. A quick Google search will help you with that. You have been listening to the Dr. Zoe show. We just finished up our health tip segment. We will be going on with our guest, Greg Dzinski, talking about intimacy in our marriages and relationships. See you guys in just a minute. People ask me, how do you have so much energy? I am not a coffee drinker, but I love the benefits of matcha green tea. More antioxidants than coffee and a smooth energy, not the jittery kind that lasts me all day long. Perfect for you super moms too. I have searched the world over for that perfect matcha for my smoothies and I have found it at Kiss Me Organics. You can get it too at kissmeorganics.com. Enter the promo code Dr. Zoe, D R Z O E, for 10% off and free shipping. Experience the smooth, healthy, organic energy of matcha green tea. Kissmeorganics.com. 
Hi there. Thanks for tuning in. This is the Dr. Zoe Show, and we are continuing with my guest, Greg Duzinski of theartofrelationships.org. And he's also the author of The Relationship Guide, Tools to Ignite Love and Intimacy. We're going to be talking about improving intimacy in your relationships. I have never once had anyone come to me, any client or patient come to me and say, I don't want to have better intimacy with my husband. I don't want him to understand me better, and I don't want him to you know know or connect with me more unless of course they were telling me that they're getting ready to get a divorce so we all desire it we all do so welcome greg we women are desperate for a male perspective so give us some goods um i want to talk about the biggest roadblocks to intimacy this, oh th this is a very subjective uh topic as mm -hmm. everybody knows everybody talks about uh communication let's face it you know it's a communication it's a big thing but what does it mean you could uh you know walk down the hall with each other and you can sort of scream at each other right you understand right. each other you're upset you're ticked at each other you're mad at each other mm -hmm. so you understand each other so where does the communication gap comes in i think the biggest thing the one thing about the killer of intimacy emotional intimacy it's not understanding one another it's you know the anger but it's the hurt underneath. And I try to teach couples right off the bat. First session is to try to get underneath the anger, the withdrawal, that type of aspect, and get at the hurt. The more you try to put yourselves in the other's shoes, it's going to be a lot easier for you to keep that intimacy, rebuild it, and strengthen it big time. Because you're not going to be afraid of the tit for tat aspects or the blame game that, you know, often takes place throughout relationships and it's huge once you start going after the hurt and looking at the other person's point of view as not right not wrong you're not fighting over anything it's just a difference of opinion you're going to maintain that intimacy big time you're going to have the emotional safety as well to go along with that that's going to be huge that is so true and when i work with couples in my practice a little tip or rule that i give them is that when you guys are disagreeing, I want both of you to think we're both right. If you start from that place of we are both right, then you're trying to understand how is my partner right? And your partner is trying to understand how are they right? And that is exactly what you said. It, it, it allows you to put yourself into their shoes and then you're not just staunchly trying to defend your point of view. So I love that. I love that. It, it's, it's so huge and a lot of people, I, I agree big time where you say, you know, a lot of people look at, you know, right and wrong, whatever. I, I tell people another key aspect, feelings are not wrong. Hmm. Perceptions are. Right. Perceptions can be whacked. They can be all over the place, as we know, but the feelings are not. You know, it could be how a raise, all this stuff, you know, you shouldn't feel that way. Why do you feel that way? You get criticized for how you feel. Mm. I want to get rid of that right away and look at the elements to where, you know what, I get how you feel. Now, what can we do about it? And that's the big thing. Once you understand how your partner feels and that you care about it, you know what, that's going to be huge. And it's going to help you look at, okay, what do we do about it? And you're going to tell your partner you actually care. You know what, you actually, it's important to you how they feel. And as you know, when you have two people, one's hurt, they're both hurt. The other one wants you, look at my hurt, look at my yes. hurt. And the other one's saying, look at my hurt, look at my hurt at the same time. And you know what happens. Absolutely. <laughs> you got people fighting, arguing, tit for tat, and they're not going after you. You know what? I know you're hurt. You know what? What's going on? What did I cause you to be hurt? Or what did I do to tick you off or to piss you off? What can I do to stop it? And a lot of people don't do that. Because let's face it, insecurities, and that's, you know, where a lot of stuff comes from, the defensive, you know, tit for tat arguments go on about, you know, wanting to be heard, wanting to be right. And it's not about that all the time. And the soonest couples realize that, you know what, the better they're going to be. The better intimacy they're going to have. Yes, because people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care and so when you're interacting with people and you want them to care about the things that you're trying to tell them you have to make sure that you first care about them and that they feel that so that's a that's a very very good tip in terms of very intimacy. very wise dr zoe and that's very wise and that is so true and that's i that's the breakdown of the intimacy it's you know the essence is 
you feel like the other person doesn't care. So mm-hmm. what do you do? You try to force them to care by yelling, screaming at them, ignoring them. It's it's the same thing I say, you know, the silent treatment. You you can have the silent treatment, but that says a lot, right? Right, exactly. You're not saying any words, body language, and you're not saying anything. What do you do to try to connect with that person instead of getting defensive? And we can, you know, go on with, you know, individuals that are narcissistic, arrogant, you know, that's a whole nother show right. aspect and how to deal with them. But most people, most people do care about how their partner feels. They're just not able to express it. And here's the thing we talked about earlier is that, of course, most women and most men already come to a relationship with this idea that we are so different. I'll never really be able to understand women. I'll never really be able to understand men. And you said that you don't really like that book, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. Can you tell me about that? No, thanks for the setup, by the way. No, um, no You're welcome. I am not a big fan of the book. Okay? Mm-hmm. There are a couple stereotypes I do buy into with gender stereotypes. And we know uh, the brain way, you know, brain scans, everything, mm-hmm. talking about the differentiation between men, women, and all this stuff. One thing I want to key in on, get rid of the gender stereotypes, okay? Mm-hmm. You need to look at what your partner wants to feel loved, appreciated, desired, craved, a priority in your life, okay? Don't base it on all men want this, all women... Because you know what? You're going to bang your head up against the wall. You're going to run into roadblocks. You need to hit on the individuality big time. And the thing with men are from Mars, women are from Venus aspect is they try to stigmatize all men are the same, all women are the same. They're not. Right. And a lot of things, I know we talked uh, Friday about, I did somewhat of an unofficial experiment over the years when uh, teaching certain psychology classes, human sexuality and I would break up the group, you know, women from the men, that type of aspect. And, you know, even, you know, gay, lesbian, you can go, you know, whatever you want, whatever you feel comfortable with. And I tell them, you know what, I want you to write down what your ideal partner is, what your ideal lover, boyfriend, girlfriend, doesn't matter, mm-hmm. spouse is. Mm-hmm. There's only one exception that, you know what, you don't list any physical characteristics, okay, because we could be here all day. So, mm-hmm. um And it comes back, and it's ironic what I found out. Not one time did it disappoint me. It comes back, and both lists, men, women, what they want an ideal partner, were like mirror images of each other. They want the same thing. And And what is that thing? What is that? They Uh want to be craved. They want to be a priority in each other's lives. And sometimes, you know, do we lose sidetrack? Do we get sidetracked of those elements? Are we thinking, and that's where the book, I don't like it, seems like we want different things. No, we want the same thing. How we go about it and what we want is an individual aspect. And there's women, I, I've worked with so many women over the years that they're not big into affection. They could care less about holding hands. And I've mm-hmm. worked with a lot of guys. I'm one of them that love affection. You know, They love holding hands and all that stuff and crests and cuddling and all this stuff. And everybody assumes you know, all men don't like affection, all women do. No. And you have to hit on the individuality of each person, and that's going to go a long way. That's a good point. Did that so answer your question? It did. It did answer my question. And I, I love that you pointed out we do all want the same things. I do agree that men and women do tend to go about it, tend, of course, differently, um, but we do want the same things. And so the question is, how do we create emotional safety in a relationship? What exactly is it? What are we doing to destroy the emotional safety? And how can we build it? The, build, the building aspect, I think we talked about that previously a little bit is being able to listen trying to understand you know what what did i do to cause you to get mad what did i do to hurt you Mm -hmm. and it might be you can come home from work or whatever and you know have a bad day and they're ticked off whatever and you're like oh no they're mad at me whatever what if you own that up what if they are mad at you can Mm -hmm. you sort of ask that means you care for one thing you know you care you you want to know you want to take your active role that's going to be huge. That's going to create emotional safety for one thing. And like you said, you know what? If you don't care, then you're going to have problems. If the other one doesn't feel that you know, care, has yes. that, you know, identity aspect that you don't care, it's going to come into problems. So you need, what did I do to make you mad? What did I do to hurt your feelings? I want to, I want to own it. And then I want to be remorseful. But what happens when someone starts 
getting mad, yelling, and screaming. What usually happens, Zoe? <laughs> Defensiveness, of course. Ah, of course. Right? Or the other one wants to hurry up and run away, right? Right, right. <laughs> don't yell at me, I will withdraw. You know, I want, and then what does that show? You don't care. You're exactly. not listening to me. You don't care what I have to say. You don't care how I feel. And they're not looking at how you feel. You're looking at the the voice tone. You're looking mm-hmm. at the facial expressions, the anger, the withdrawal. You're looking at, you know, what's going on underneath this. You know what? I want to care what you feel. That matters to me. Right. And that's going to create emotional intimacy big time. And, and when it comes to safety. Too. Absolutely. And when it comes to communication, of course, we know that 80% of our communication isn't what we say it's our body language it's our tone and the other thing when it comes to communication that you were just alluding to is that it doesn't really matter what you say and i've said this before even on this radio show and i say it all the time what matters is what's heard and so when you talk you might be trying to convey something to your partner and that doesn't really matter the words you use you need to make sure that your partner hears what you're intending them to hear and awesome advice yeah because it gets mixed up somewhere in that mix we all see our world through dif- different lenses and we don't all hear the same things when people oh, talk heck no. no and that's not a gender thing that's no. an age thing it's a individual Ab- thing. absolutely and what they, when everybody knows when relationships let's face it you see your clients i see my clients mm-hmm. couples and everything too here in detroit and you look at you know when things are good there's no issues right right the, main issue is you know what when things are bad that's when when there's arguments when there's disagreements how do you connect with each other and maintain emotional safety and how do you maintain that one thing is you know you talk about how many people you know what you know they'll call names with each other which definitely is Mm, not a good thing no but also what will happen they'll start yelling and screaming at the other person what happens to create emotional connection you know what? I adore you. You're my world. I love you. However, it hurt me. You said this. You mm-hmm, did this. Mm-hmm. You know what? It, it ticked me off that you did this. But if you start with, you know what? I adore you. You're my world. I love you. However, that type of thing. And everyone says, you know, the but, the however. But usually, if you start with an affirmation, yes. I love you. Uh, you're my world type aspect. You've let down those people, defenses. Ah, yes. You're yes. not going to get the defenses are going to drop, and you're able. You might be heard Mm -hmm. better. Absolutely. That's a right during the first session. I try to hit on big time. You know what? If you handle it this way, it'll lower the defenses. Then maybe they're going to be more apt to to listen. But I also want you, instead of the anger, to speak from the vulnerabilities in the heart. I love that point you just made. And we're going to follow up after our commercial because you're right people don't speak from their vulnerability and everybody's scared to do it they speak from anger they speak around a topic but using your vulnerability is going to increase your intimacy we're going to be back and we're going to talk about how you can do that how you can speak to your partner from your vulnerable side this is the dr zoe show we'll be back in a minute People ask me, how do you have so much energy? I am not a coffee drinker, but I love the benefits of matcha green tea. More antioxidants than coffee and a smooth energy, not the jittery kind that lasts me all day long. Perfect for you super moms too. I have searched the world over for that perfect matcha for my smoothies and I have found it at Kiss Me Organics. You can get it too at kissmeorganics.com. Enter the promo code Dr. Zoe, D R Z O E, for 10% off and free shipping. Experience the smooth, healthy, organic energy of matcha green tea. KissMeOrganics.com. Welcome back. This is the Dr. Zoe Show, and we are speaking with our guest, Greg Duzinski. We're having some interesting conversation about intimacy, relationships, and Greg, can you tell us how can people connect with you? Oh, sure. Oh, professionally, you're talking about Yes. <laughs> how can they <laughs> find you? You have a radio oh, no, show, sorry. a website. <laughs> people can find me at uh, the art, A-R-T, of relationships.org. Uh, you can look up, you know, I'm all over Facebook, social media, um, Detroit's Love Guru for Instagram. Uh, Twitter is Detroit Love Guru because it's too long. I had to drop the S. So you can, I'm all over the place. Facebook, um, you can look up. My first name is spelled G-R-E-G. Last name is D-U-D-Z-I-N. 
SKI. And again, uh, name of my private practice here in Detroit is the art of relationships. Thank you. Awesome. And do you do virtual therapy or coaching? Yes, I do do virtual therapy as well. I know that's the up and coming thing. It is. Um, I do Zoom and Skype too. So I do either one. Both of them are very easy, um, pretty private. And uh, Zoom is very private. So I do that as well. So I have clients and I have clients that might be you know, going back and forth between, say, New York and Detroit mm-hmm. or Atlanta, Detroit, where I meet with them in my office or, you know, I'll put one on Skype or we do uh, a conference calling as well, too. So right. that works well. Yeah, so, it does. I do the same. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And you can also check out your radio show. You can uh, see that yes. on your Facebook because that you stream. Is, on my Facebook yeah. as well. It's awesome. I do uh, my show, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Time. Uh, I do it live video so you can see my mug too mm-hmm. uh, on uh, my Facebook page as well uh, under Greg Dzinski. Look under that and it's live, it's video. You can call me live. You can do live discussions, everything else. So awesome. I try to have a lot of fun with it. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Greg. So I Thanks. wanted to talk a little bit about vulnerability because I think this is a really big one. When we are having discussions or when our expectations aren't met in our relationships, often we get angry, we, um, you know, complain or we blame and we use our anger to communicate instead of saying something like, I'm really hurt, I miss you, I wish I could spend more time with you, or this thing is hurting me. It's a much easier to just get mad and say, you never do this and you never do that. Why, why is that, Zoe? You and I might know this, maybe not. You're a woman, I'm a man, we're supposed to be, right? Different, but anyway, <laughs> go back to that. You look, a lot of people don't wanna do that because what happens if you, the vulnerability, it comes out and you say, I'm hurt, the biggest fear is they're not going to care, right? Right. It's all so about fear. What do we do? We get angry. We get everything else. And mm-hmm. When I talk about you know vulnerability, you know during the break we we're talking about. I think the number one thing you can do to increase emotional and physical intimacy mm-hmm. is to be vulnerable with each other. And I tell people, you know, that doesn't make you a doormat. You can speak from the hurt, but you're still not going to allow someone to disrespect you. To treat you like a doormat you're going to command respect for yourself so you can both be you know if you want to say i don't say weak i think it takes a lot of guts and strength no. to be vulnerable yeah you know what i can be okay feeling this way but i'm not going to allow you or anybody else to use that against me to throw it in my face and all this stuff and let's face it that's our biggest fear and i tell you know with vulnerability a lot of couples they hit on you know what we argue about the dumbest stuff greg we you know it's stuff that doesn't really matter i say because you're afraid to talk about the vulnerability the it's real thing yes. would you ever go up to somebody you know your partner and say you do i turn you on anymore are you in love with me anymore hmm. you don't want to do that because what if the answer is it's no scary. you don't turn me on anymore no i'm not in love with you anymore so we guard against that yes. and what do we do we withdraw we'll nag we'll you know nitpick we'll well get mad and call each other names instead of going at the reality. So I teach people to be confident enough to go from the hurt, to speak from the vulnerability. And that is, for some people, really, really terrifying. But oh, it is. I'm not saying it. Yeah, <laughs> it no. sounds like it's easy. It's not easy. <laughs> it's not. It, it's it, not easy. It takes easy. a lot of work and uh, a lot of self, uh, lot of self-courage. Mm-hmm. But the benefits are amazing. And huge yeah they really are i mean they they can instantly deepen a relationship and the relief that's felt when you're authentic and true is is just it's just amazing okay so i want to talk a little bit about why men lie to women from your opinion we'll see if we agree (laughs) yeah it's funny i'm gonna tick uh dr zoe off too you might A lot of men, I, I never excuse it. Just, you know, like 80, 85% of the couples I see, there's an affair. She cheated, he cheated, they both cheated. Mm-hmm. The same thing with this, um, with why men lie. I never condone it. Just like affairs, I don't condone it. I don't excuse it. I look at what causes it. Right. Most men, and this goes where, um, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, you know, wife situations, it doesn't matter. A lot of men lie. Because let's face it, ladies, 
you set them up to lie. So I'm you're saying it's our fault. Truth. I'm, no matter what, I want you to be honest with me. I want you to be honest with me. You know what? Do I look fat in this dress? And the guy said, well, you do a little bit. You know what? What's going to happen? You're a jerk. You're this. He's every name in the book. He's right. mean. You don't love me. You're not attractive to me. That's not it. Maybe he's being honest with you. But you cannot take that honesty. I don't want men to be disrespectful. I don't want them to be, you know, hurtful. And no, not at all. This is different. But women, can you be confident enough to hear the absolute truth, not get defensive? You can be hurt. I get that. You know, but can you sort of put your gut down and allow the hurt to sink in. But can you be confident enough and grow to be confident enough? to hear the truth so and a lot of women women you'll set up the guy when you start bashing calling him names what are you teaching that guy Mm -hmm. no you know you make a really really good point and i i do agree with you it's not the woman's fault because i know a lot of people women might feel like it's my fault it's women's fault right it's not but we have to understand what kinds of reactions we create in people by the way we communicate and this is actually in all relationships even with our kids you know, you. when your kids come to, you know, when you're honest or your kids come to you and they're honest and you bash them, then guess what you're teaching them? You're, it's conditioning, right? It's just classical Absolutely. conditioning. You're conditioning them not to be truthful with you. And that can be so, hurtful. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, when I used, to, I used to work with a lot of trauma, sexual abuse and stuff in mm-hmm. kids, and you look at, I agree, why? and I look at the parent. You know, they're mad because the, the kid lied to them. I'm like, why are you setting your kids up to lie? And I, you know, they look at me like I'm weird or strange or whatever. Mm. And then I go through this. I agree. When you're setting up your man to lie, he needs to be confident enough to tell you the truth no matter what your reaction is. I get that. Like I right. said, our reactions are on us. It's not, you know, the old kid situation. Mm-hmm. Why'd you hit your little sister? She made me. You know, <laughs> you need to own yes. your responsibility. You need to own your behaviors. So if you can... Men, I want you to stand your ground to speak the truth in the matter what. But be respectful. Be kind. Mm-hmm. Okay? But I also want women, you, know, you need to be confident enough to hear the truth. You know what? At least he's being honest. Right. You know what? If someone said that, uh, you know what? Am I, am I the best lover you've ever had? And what happens if your guy said, well, you know what? No. Oh, my God. What would that do to you, Zoe? But you know that, what? Some questions... This is a man or a woman. It doesn't yeah. matter on the gender, right? Yeah, it hurts. It hurts to hear it something hurts. like that. But it's actually a question <laughs> that you shouldn't ask, right? If you're not really well, ready to to hear that, the answer. Mm-hmm. That's the insecurities we know, right? Yes, yes. Oh, am I this? Am I this? That's the insecurity we are talking about. Emotional and sexual maturity. That's a big deal of it. But... If he says no, what would you do? Like, fine, I'm never going to give you any. I'm not going to sleep with you anymore. See if I ever give you sex anymore. Why can't you be confident enough to say, you know what? I'm going to be the best you've ever had. I want you to teach me and show me to be the best. Hmm. How many people would be able to do that? Ooh. That's maturity. That's maturity. And I love that. I love that. I make it sound so easy. It's not easy. It's not. It's very, very difficult. To have that strength and the confidence within yourself, mm-hmm. you know what? What can I do to be better? We are. Everybody's different. Every woman's different. Every man's different. What you like might be totally different than what another woman wants or man. But we need to look at that and be okay to learn from it mm-hmm. and be confident enough to hear the truth. And this goes for men too. It shouldn't be just for women, but it's for both. Genders. Of course. And the reality right. is, anything you know worth having is going to take some work. It's going to be hard to get there. So great, great tips. Thank you, Greg. We will be back in just a minute, and we'll be talking a little bit about how can you repair a relationship when there's been an affair, how can you get intimacy back? Because you talked a little bit about affairs, Greg. So this is the Dr. Zoe Show. We'll see you in just a minute. People ask me, how do you have so much energy? I am not a coffee drinker, but I love the benefits of matcha green tea. More antioxidants than coffee and a smooth energy, not the jittery kind that lasts me all day long. Perfect for you super moms too. I have searched the world over for that perfect matcha for my smoothies and I have found it at Kiss Me Organics. You can get it too at kissmeorganics.com. 
Enter the promo code Dr. Zoe, D R Z O E, for 10% off and free shipping. Experience the smooth, healthy, organic energy of matcha green tea. KissMeOrganics.com. Welcome back. It's the Dr. Zoe Show, and we are here with my guest, Greg Duzinski, and we've been talking about intimacy and relationships, and I think this is good stuff and things we women really need to hear about. So actually, we're not going to do my Real Talk segment. We're going to finish this out uh, before the show is over. So Greg, Greg, what would be one thing that you would say to a woman who's really struggling in her marriage and feels lost about how to connect with her husband? Maybe there's been an affair. And how do you regenerate intimacy? The big thing. Wow, that's a uh, loaded question. Uh, you know, <laughs> reconnecting as far as, you know, there's a couple things. If there's an affair or the passion intimacy is gone, we're mm-hmm. talking to or. You know, was that was the res the fair a result of the passion and intimacy going? I want her to be honest. I want her to be able to speak from the hurt, the heart. You know what she would love from him, and come. You know, speak from the heart. Don't come from the anger. It's very mm. easy to do. I get that. When we're hurt, we want to attack. We want so much to try to force the other person to listen to us. But speak from the heart and ask ask your guy, what do you need? So, you know, what do you need so you know I love you? I can love you better. I can love you more differently the way you want. That's going to be a huge, huge help for women to go after and try to reconnect with their man because, you know what, it's important. We want to feel loved. We want to feel desired. We want to feel craved big time. What can I do to do this? No tip for tat. No, well, if you do this, I'll do that. Get rid of that. Your needs are important, ladies, big time. Very much so. But you need to take turns as far as listening to each other. You need to hear what he needs, what he wants, feel loved, appreciate. Again, every man is different. Every woman is different. You need to key in specifically on what he needs. And you can you, you can write down what do you need soulfully, physically, you know, emotionally, mentally, mm-hmm. those type of aspects. That's gonna be key. Okay, so I hear uh, what I hear you saying is that if there's been a violation or breakdown of trust and intimacy in the relationship, that those are really important questions to ask. And I agree with you. I do. I just want to make sure that we're also saying that, of course, it's not your fault, women. And we're only speaking from what a woman can do because we're not talking about what the other partner can do because obviously he has his own responsibilities in this and there are things that he needs to say and ask in in this whole process but greg is talking about what can you do from your side to increase the intimacy we in with fears and like i said with when there's cheating going Mm -hmm. on you need to know three things real quick you need to know what caused it again you're not excusing it you're not condoning affairs i never do absolutely not you need to know what caused it Mm -hmm. okay there has to be genuine remorse and guilt And there has to be a commitment not to do it again, okay? Now, if your man is coming at you and you are speaking from the heart, you get angry. You, you know what? He needs to show you remorse. Baby, I'm sorry I hurt you. I'm sorry I'll never do this again, whatever. But you need to know your role in it, maybe what caused it or what he was not getting from you. Again, Mm -hmm. as Dr. Zoe said, it is not your fault that it happened. But you need to look at your role. And that's what I said about looking at, you know, how does he want to be loved, cared for, desire, made a priority, that type of aspect. It still does not give him the excuse to cheat on you. Absolutely. Because something was wrong with the relationship. And so, or, and it takes two. Go ahead. Or what? I was going to say real quick, mm-hmm. 10, 15% of people that do cheat, mm-hmm. how can I say this? She's either a hoe and he's a dog, <laughs> and you know what? It's not going to change. So good luck to you. But most affairs happen because there is a breakdown in a relationship on that, typically on an emotional level. Right. That makes sense. I mean, yes, there's some people who are just going to deceive and just going to be who they are. But of course, most affairs, like you said, happen because there's some type of breakdown. Yes, and absolutely. the majority of affairs aren't really about sex, right? They're really uh, you know generally what? You're absolutely yes, correct. about seeking that emotional intimacy in different absolutely. ways. Absolutely. Thank you. (gasps) Absolutely. Right. Because of your point earlier, we all want the same things. 
Oh, nice. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Okay. So thank you, Greg. I just, I so appreciate you being here today um, and joining our show. You can connect with Greg at theartofrelationships.org. And there you can get all of his information about his radio show, about working with him if you're interested in working with him. And I'm going to talk next week about my real talk issue. My real talk issue is going to be about making tough decisions, but I'm going to put that off. I'm going to talk about it next week because I don't want to get into it and um, not have enough time to it for it. So if you are just tuning in, this is the end of the Dr. Zoe show. You've been here with uh, Dr. Zoe and Greg Duzinski, the love guru um, of Detroit. And, um, we have been talking about relationships and intimacy and we would love to continue those conversations on social media so please connect with us you can find me at the doctor uh i'm sorry drzoeshaw.com you can connect with me on all my social medias at dr zoe shaw next week we will be continuing our relationship talk speaking with jamie green licensed psychotherapist and life coach of alchemy and love on and off the couch which he goes into your homes which is awesome and it's another guy so we have a streak going two guys in a row don't miss this show it's going to be a good one thank you for tuning in to the dr zoe show tune in next week and every week on tuesdays from 12 to 1 pacific 3 to 4 eastern at la radio now and check out reruns of my show on itunes google play libsyn and youtube where i am your life and relationship coach i help sometimes struggling women keep your your mind in the game by redefining your superwoman. Connect with me at drzoeshaw.com or any of my social medias at the handle Dr. Zoe Shaw. Join my free newsletter and get a free copy of 30 Minute Life Transformation, the secret to getting stuff done by texting the word join to 38470. I look forward to speaking with you wonderful ladies on social media after the show. Have a super week. You've been listening to the Dr. Zoe Show. Redefining your superwoman with your host, Dr. Zoe Shaw. Don't forget to sign up for her monthly newsletters to get encouragement, tips, and skills for keeping your mind in the superwoman game. Connect with her now at www.drzoeshaw.com. Tell your friends and subscribe to her podcast on iTunes. Join us next time for another edition of The Dr. Zoe Show.